Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be talking about how to analyze your Google Forms data. As we all know, tayong mga teachers, kailangan po natin kunin ang frequency of responses right after giving an exam to our students. Madali lang po yun kapag tayo po ay face-to-face, -face, no? Pero ngayon, dahil po tayo ay nasa new normal, ang unang tanong po natin ay paano nyo po gagawin ang frequency of responses? So, madali lang po yan, pero bago po ang lahat, dapat po ay napanood nyo na po ang aking video about how to make an online quiz using a Google Forms. Kung hindi nyo pa po napapanood, please watch this video. Ayan. So, paano po ba ang gagawin natin para magawa natin ng mabilis ang frequency of responses? Madali lamang po, and I will walk you through on how to do it. Tara! To start with, we should go to Google and look for Google Drive. Again, just like in my previous tutorial, you can see Google Drive in this 9 box icon in the upper right corner of your screen. And scroll down, you will see Drive. And look for your target drive. Kasi if you have more than one Gmail account, you will be having more than one Google Drive as well. So, let me switch to my target Google Drive. There. Dapat po andito yung file po ng inyong online quiz and yung attach na Excel file na naglalaman lahat ng data. By the way, beforehand, I have made this short quiz and I asked my previous students as well as my co-teachers to answer the quiz. It's a 10-item short quiz. But then, nasa sa inyo po yun kung gano'ng kahaba yung quiz ninyo. Kung exam siya, syempre, 50 items. Tama po. So, special thanks nga po pala sa mga nagsagot na mga isudyante ko from 10 helium, 10 gold, 10 sulfur, 10 iodine, and 10 titanium. And sa mga co-teachers ko po sa science department. So, next, open your short quiz and your Google Sheets. So, makikita po natin dito, andito na po lahat ng data ng lahat ng mga nagsagot po sa aking short quiz. If it's a quarterly test, of course, it would be over 50. Or it depends on you, again. So, ano po yung makikita natin dito? So, I will be showing you the contents of my short quiz. I have here the name, the gender, and the age, all required fields. And then, 10 multiple choice questions, which are all topics or questions under the first quarter of science grade 10. So, kinuha ko lang po yung mga questions na to sa isang previous exam po natin. Namin, rather. So, yung pagkakasunod-sunod po ng mga questions po dito, yun din yung lalabas ng mga responses dito. Because in some cases, uh, you will be um, shuffling all the questions, but then the responses should be arranged accordingly, depende doon sa kung paano mo siya pinagkakasunod-sunod doon sa iyong mismo Google Drive quiz or Google Forms quiz. Okay, so let's inspect the results page. In the first column, you will see the timestamp. So here, uh, we can see kung anong oras po nagpasa si student ng kanyang quiz. Kung anong oras siya nag-click ng submit button. Second column, you will see the score over 10. And then, letter C, the name of the student the gender, the age, and then the answer per question from columns F to, I think, O. Ayan. So, dyan pa lang, pwede na tayo makakuha ng mga data na kailangan natin. Pero ano ba yung pinakamadaling way? So, the easiest way would be to go back to your quiz and go to 
responses. The default tab would be questions. But then go to responses. If you scroll down, you will see different data. First, the average, which is also the mean score, the median, the range, and then a graph showing the points distribution, frequently missed questions, name of respondents, a chart giving the gender, number of male and female respondents, a graph showing the age of the respondents if you ask that, and then the answer per question. Now, punta muna po tayo dito. Okay, so teachers, particularly public school teachers, once we are done checking our tests, usually we are asked for the mean, the standard deviation, and the MPS or the mean percentage score. And then after that, we are also asked for the frequency of responses for us to be able to identify the least mastered topics. So, napakadali lang siyang gawin dito by just looking at the data provided by Google Forms. So, una, average. Average is also the mean. So, here, out of 71 responses, the average is said to be 6.63. Tama po. Ngayon, kung kayo ay walang tiwala po kay Google, pwede naman natin siyang i-compute po rito. So, how do we do that? So, mean... The formula for Excel is average and then the range of the data. So, that's B2, cell B2 up to cell B72. May kita natin na nagkaroon siya ng parang orange box or yellow box around those data. And then, we click enter. And then, you will get 7 over 10. So, ito ay 7 kasi rounded off. If we want to see the value in two decimal places, we increase the decimal places. Okay? So, you will get here 6.63, which is the same as the value given by Google Forms. Alright? Now, median, hindi naman po tinatanong sa atin yan. Range, hindi rin. But then, if you want those data... Maybe kailangan nyo sa inyong study or um, whatever, you can use this data. Next, we can also get the standard deviation, but then it's not provided by Google Forms. So, we can just key in here, STDEV. STDEV is the um, formula for standard deviation in Excel. Makikita po natin no, na si Google Sheets ay very much similar to Excel except that it is done or it's being used online. So again, that's B2 to B72. Okay, and then ang dinisplay niya napakaraming digits so we can decrease the decimal place to two decimal places and we will get 2.42. Diba? Napakadali lang. And then the MPS, the mean percentage score. For us teachers, dahil 50 items po yung ating um, test, times 2 lang siya for the mean percentage score. So kapag iba yung kanyang over, mag-iiba din yung formula. But then for the case of just showing it since we are using times 2, yun ang gagamitin natin ngayon. But then, very important, no, yung times 2 na formula is only applied whenever the number of items is over 50. So, we just select the cell B75, which is your cell for the mean or the average, and multiply that by 2. Then, you will be getting the MPS. Alright, so we are done with mean standard deviation and MPS. So next, how about the frequency of correct responses? It's also very easy. Sa pinakababa, pinapakita yung bilang ng mga batang sumagot kada option. So we have a total of 71 responses and 
we can see the correct answers in green in the following graphs. So, kukopihin na lang natin yung bilang. Hindi na natin kailangan na magpataas pa ng kamay or magpatanong pa sa mga bata via Zoom kung ano yung score nila, kung tama ba sila. Diba? Kasi yun yung traditional na way natin ng pag-frequency. So, we don't need to do that anymore. We just simply copy these numbers. So, for example, for question number 1, 66. Question number 2, 52. Question number 3, 47, question number 4, 54, question number 5, 53, question number 6, 47, question number 7, 25, question number 8, 30, question number 9, 48, and question number 10, 49. Ngayon, kung gusto nyo po ng medyo mas malalim pa po na pag-aaral, like um, analysis po ng mga distractors, ng mga other options ninyo, makikita nyo rin po yung number ng responses sa bawat distractor. Okay? So, dito po, ang advantage niya, we are very sure that the numbers are accurate. Kasi yung pagpapataas-pataas ng kamay for the traditional way of getting the frequency of responses, it's quite, um, anong tawag dito? It's quite difficult to get accurate results kasi minsan kapag dulo na like number 50 na yung question, tinatamad na magtaas ng kamay yung bata. So minsan, iba-iba na yung mga numbers na nakukuha natin. So there you go. That's how easy we can get the frequency of responses and other summary statistics for the results of our exams. So thank you for watching my video. Kung meron po kayong natutunan sa video ko, please don't forget to like and share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel para po makita niyo po agad yung mga bago ko pong videos. Maraming salamat. See you in my next video.